Pam Smith, given this week's report about the dangers of processed meat, what would panel members recommend as a healthy alternative to the traditional English breakfast? The processed meat includes, amongst other things, bacon, sausages, you name it. Um, Ed Davey, you look as if you quite often have a healthy yeah. breakfast. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, you're, you're, you're getting your own back for that David comment, aren't you? I can see that. I, I said healthy. Uh, but, uh, no, well, my, my wife is certainly reacting to your uh, observation, uh, and I'm getting fed uh, for breakfast fruit and porridge, uh, uh, and I'm beginning to like it. <laughs> um, Peter Tatchell, famously vegetarian, can you give, offer an alternative to those who like processed meat for breakfast? Well, I think, you know, it is down to individual choice, but undoubtedly the healthier option is one without meat. And um, Ed has mentioned oats. Um, you know, they are a very, very good high-protein form of cereal. They release energy slowly. They're very good for your heart and blood pressure. Um, you know, I think it may be an acquired taste, but a taste worth acquiring for the sake of your longevity. Um, I think this issue, though, opens up a wider wider question about the whole food industry in this country. The food industry in this country is out of control. It is a lawless organization or set of organizations, not lawless in the sense they're criminal, but they are just doing what they want regardless of the consequences of people's health. And so much of our food is pumped with preservatives, colorings, uh, lots of products that have herbicide residues. Um, these are all things that we know are bad for our health. And I think the Food Standards Agency has a lot to answer for. It has been wholly ineffective in safeguarding the nation's health and making sure that manufacturers produce healthy food that will not cause harm. Do you like the traditional English breakfast, Andrea? Well, I'm delighted to say that I agree with Peter. I think, uh, you know, the food industry has a lot to answer for, and, and certainly I'm a granola girl myself, low, low GI load, very good for your heart. Low, your, I mean, low, low GI. GI. Glycemic index, uh, yeah. yeah. My husband's diabetic, so I know about these things. Very important to eat healthily, but actually you can't beat a fry-up on a Sunday morning. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, Maria Eagle. Well, I'm kind of with Ed and Peter on the porridge, actually. It's, it's a really good start to the day. And, uh, uh, um, but that isn't to say you can't have your rasher of bacon a couple of times a week. I mean, let's not, let's not remove all pleasure from eating for those meat eaters who quite like their, their fry up. But I, I do think if you, if you do get a decent bit of muesli or porridge in the morning, it keeps you going for an awful long part of the day. I'm going to go to our questioner. What would you recommend? Um, well, I, I think I'll try and stick to the muesli a bit more often and the uh, fried breakfast. Mm, you maybe, like fried... Maybe, you, you, you maybe like, even cut it out of Sunday. You, you like the odd fried breakfast, do you? Once a week, yeah. yeah. Who in this audience likes um, the, what is described the traditional English breakfast, as Pam Smith puts it? Who likes a traditional English breakfast? Who, on the basis of this report, is going to cut back? And certainly there was, a, there was a, about a third of this large audience here clearly likes it. Of those, of those who like it, who's going to cut back as a result of the anxieties expressed uh, in this report? Uh, not very many. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, <laughs> use a good butcher, a member of the audience says. We'll go to our next, please. Uh, John Gammon. Are too many... Gammon. <laughs> John Gammon. <laughs> yeah, very appropriate. Are too many NHS hospitals complacent? 